so you have, uh, I assume, then uh, little 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 bits of project here and there that you that have been um, brewing on back burners while you're working on uh, on egg on the loose and, and other things. Oh yeah, yeah. I have many sketchbooks that probably have 150 sketchbooks of ideas and pieces of things, and a lot of times they do without my even meaning to. They kind of morph into another form, and then they become a book. When I look back, I say, oh, that's where that came from. Like, it was a different name. It was a different character, but the same kind of idea became one of my actual published books. And then there's many, many, like I go through probably two large sketchbooks a year, at least. So there's many other projects that are brewing and waiting for their moment or characters that don't have a story yet or like subjects that I want to write about that are all in there and I have to even just remember that they're in there. Do they step forward and let you know when it's time? It's time to do my story. Today is the day. Or is it just your editor calls up and says, hey, we'd really love to do this kind of project. Like, oh, you know what? I have one of those. Let me let me grab it. Uh, I think it is. Yeah, it has its time and I'm hoping for some characters, I've had them for like 12 years now. I'm just like, man, when is this gonna, when am I gonna know what the story is for this character? But I don't give up. I keep on trying to put them into different stories and find out who they are. And like, for example, with Elephant of Surprise, uh, that's an interrupting chicken book. I had this idea for an Elephant of Surprise for a long time even before the first chicken book came out. But I didn't know what to do with the elephant. And then I realized if I put it into the chicken book, it'll be this really good chemistry. And like, that's where the elephant finally found its home in an interrupting chicken book. Oh, this is cool. I haven't even seen this, but they put, they put like some crayon decorations in the beginning that I haven't seen. <laughs> it's nice. The paperback version, so it's different than what I've seen. But yeah, that's one case where that, that elephant probably sat around for 12 years before I knew what to do with it. Do you know what it is that uh, has you so interested in chickens? Is it has it become the brand or have you always been gravitating toward chickens? Do you foresee, obviously, at least one more graphic novel with Beaky Barnes, but do you foresee more chickens in your future? I think I'm going to avoid the chickens because I'm getting to be the chicken guy now. <laughs> <laughs> but I just happen to have these characters that are chickens and needed to be in a story, so... Beaky is not the same as the little red chicken. Uh, it wouldn't have worked as well with like a Gila monster or something because I, I guess they lay eggs too, but I needed to have a character who lays an egg. And chickens are just funny. And she clucks instead of talking throughout the whole, you know, series. So she's, she's the main character, but she only says cluck basically. <laughs> for 128 pages. <laughs> um, so I thought that was really fun to just have this character who, you know, she just clucks and you have to guess how she's feeling by the context and what she's doing. And it's a funny noise. Chickens just sound funny and they walk funny and, they, and the word chicken is funny. So it's a pretty tempting package to put into a book. But yeah, I think uh, the next one is, is mainly about a duck. So I got away from the chickens somewhat in the sequel.